So you want to get started scouting buck beds or hunting buck beds, whatever you want to do. You want to be able to find them and be a more effective hunter. Um, in this video, we're going to walk you through some basic rules of thumb on how to identify buck bedding and what bucks are looking for, especially your mature bucks. What is the optimal scenario for a mature buck to bed and what's he looking for and what things affect where he beds and when he beds. So uh, we're going to go through all that and hopefully by the end of this video you have a really good idea and you can start applying this to your hunting. Hey, I'm Mike and this is the Everyday Bow Hunter. Uh, like I said in this video today, we're going to talk basic buck bedding 101 and take you through uh, everything you need to know to really get you on track to learning a lot more about how bucks bed and what they're looking for. Now, I've done a couple videos that are kind of tracking in with this one. I've done uh, a how to read topo maps and how to plan your hunt. In the how to uh, plan your hunt video, I really talk a lot about uh, planning on hunting off of buck bedding. So if you haven't seen that after this video, you might have a much better idea of how to do that. And then what I, I'm also going to do is going to be a follow-up video to this where I talk through how to identify uh, buck bedding on a map, how to find those buck bedding areas on a map. Um, so before you even go out and get on the ground, you know where to go. I'm going to bring the whiteboard up here in a second, and we're going to walk through all the rules of thumb you need to know and how you can really enhance your ability to understand exactly how bucks bed, what they're looking for, and what the optimal scenario is for uh, mature buck bedding. There's a couple things that we have to talk about before we jump into there. And the first thing we need to talk about is, hey, if you like the video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and hit that like button. We really appreciate it. Love to have you back for more videos. So first thing we're going to talk about is general rules of thumb, kind of uh, buck bedding 101. There's some very, you know, textbook type things we're talking about. An optimal scenario for a buck, especially a mature buck who's been around and has, has grown and matured and, and understands uh, how the winds affect them, how thermals affect them and everything, and they really fine tune their bedding. So in a optimal scenario, if we look at basic buck bedding 101, we're looking at a couple things. We're looking at the fact that he's got structure behind him. It's, you know, high density cover. The number one thing that, that bucks are looking for is, is cover and concealment in their movements. So they're also looking at, for that in their bedding. They're, they're looking to have a structure behind them and they're looking to have visibility in front of them. Not always. There's times they can be knee deep in thick, really thick cover. I literally walked and stepped on a, a bit, huge eight point in thick mountain laurel where he had no visibility all around him. But he was just tucked in there like a rabbit and I stepped right, right nearly on him. He jumped up and almost knocked me over. So th there's different scenarios out there and every buck has a, its own personality but there's some some basic tenets here we have to have to look at they want that structure behind them they want visibility in front of them they want the wind at their back and they want thermals pushing in, up into their their face so they not only have that vis visibility but they also have um, any kind of scent coming to them from kind of thermal activity such so a that's a perfect scenario and of course on a day-to-day -day basis that changes it all different directions so but buck will change their bedding based on winds and thermals and sometimes they won't sometimes they'll stay in the same bedding area because they're comfortable with it and nobody bothers bothers them there that's where it all also comes down to hunting pressure access if nobody can get into an area where a deer deer's at and they're not pressured then they're, they're going to be more comfortable with a, a less than secure bedding location so you have to look at those things and deer love transition they love you know, they are creatures of the edge. You'll hear this over and over again. I don't care whose video you watch. You hear people say, deer are creatures of the edge and they will put themselves on transition lines. What are transition lines? A transition line can be something as simple as a road. It can be a stream. It can be a break between hardwood timber and thick pines or a clear cut area and and open woods or or just uh, you know two different kinds of vegetation meeting up against each other or two a field with a a edge uh you know a hedgerow in between two fields can be that edge that really dictates how they're they're moving and they move along these transition lines and they move along them and you will see often 
deer trails paralleling these transition lines whether it's north to south on a on a hill or east to west it doesn't matter if that transition is there in, in vegetation they will be there and a lot of times those transition lines also dictate food and that's why they will will be there and deer often bed not just buck but doe and buck bed near these transition lines and buck just tend to have more things that they look at so if we look at this on the whiteboard here we look at this kind of perfect uh scenario the buck bedding kind of 101 what a mature buck is looking for is we have a hilltop here and this hilltop goes down into a valley excuse my poor drawing and then you have um the ridge line that kind of goes like this and then you have this very poor <laughs> drawing here of of a deer and you will see here as the hill goes down that area between where it's on say a bench here and the contour lines as you're traveling the contour lines on a ridge and where it drops off the kind of that perfect scenario in hill country or in the mountains for a buck would be to be right on that military crest and in that upper one-third of of the mountain or hill and that gives them perfect scenario where they have if you see here i have west to east winds so you have to look at your uh, the prevalent winds in your particular area where you're out that wind is constant you're going to find that buck bedding is generally focused on the the predominant winds in your area so for me i'm in pennsylvania the predominant winds are normally coming from the west to the east although we do have often east to west winds we had a bunch this year in the archery season but then um a lot of times you know you have shifts where it be a northwest wind or a southwest wind but that'll still hold true for a spot like this so if they are on the leeward side of this hilltop that leeward side being the side where the prevailing winds comes over their head so those winds are coming down over the deer's head and he can smell anything behind him so he's sitting there he has that wind coming over his head he can smell all that and he has anything that's coming behind him he can be up and gone before he ever even sees you so that gives him security there he also has some kind of structure behind him to give him an ability to hide there and it could be a tree i've actually seen uh bucks buck bedding where it's very wide open behind them but they have that hillside in back of them and they feel that security that hillside that, that gives them adequate cover it can be 40 50 60 yards and they're perfectly happy with that so um so you can see buck bedding kind of out in the open in some of those type of scenarios too but then you have the thermals now if you're not familiar with thermals i'll quickly explain it as as the sun comes up in the morning right it heats whatever air is in low area especially in hill country this is you know when you're out in the plains and stuff you don't have this effect as much um, but you still have it but in a in a mountains type hill hill type area where you have a valley and that heat will make the air rise through the day and as that air rises it actually pushes the wind or pushes a thermal wind up so as that rises if you ever like threw milkweed out and that milkweed kind of rose up and went away from you that's that thermal push of the heat um, of the day warming the air and it's rising then and at the evening as that air cools it then drops down so early in the day here we're buck bedding where they're bedded during the day for most of the day they have that security of that wind coming over their back they have the thermals rising and pushing that scent from below them up to them so they also smell anything coming from below them and then they also can see down below them as, as well so that gives them a massive amount of security and it, with a mature buck the older they get the more smart they get on this as they're younger those bucks might be down here bedded lower they might be down and bedded down in the lower valley and you can have mature bucks bedded bedded down in the bottom of the valley too don't get me wrong they they can bed down there too um, they have different scenarios where they are in thick cover down in the middle of a valley that buck i was talking about in the mountain laurel was only maybe i don't know 150 yards from a uh, stream down the bottom of the valley when i when i kicked him out so there's different scenarios where that happens but as deer receive more pressure during the hunting season they always go to these secure areas and they get up on these crests where they have this kind of, of security cover behind them and visibility in front of them 
and they can tell if you're coming from those thermals and from sight. So it gives them that security, it makes them very hard to hunt. And that's why you have to, to use the winds to your advantage. You have to get in there ahead of them before they get up there uh, during the day and, or you know below them at night so that your thermals are dropping. So that's kind of the basics. It's kind of buck bedding 101. Right. Every deer has its own personality. Every situation is different. Food dries a lot. Water dries a lot as it's really hot. You know, like I said, they could want to be closer to water. If there hasn't been a lot of rain and they're not getting a lot of water from vegetation and stuff, that can drive them to be lower. Also, if everybody's hunting high, if there's a lot of road access high on a hilltop like this, then your, your bucks will tend to bed lower to be away from that pressure so every situation you have to look at a little bit differently but we're going to go in now now we cover those basic rules of thumb we're going to go in the computer here and we're going to take a look at some of the places you can look at where bucks tend to bed the most